welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky Athletics podcast. I'm your host, Steven Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. Welcome back, and thank you for downloading and listening to another episode of the Topper Talk podcast. We are the official podcast of the Red Towel Trust Collective, and also a part of the College Huddle community. As always, follow us on our socials. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. False. Find us anywhere. Um, just search for Topper Talk. You'll find us. I guarantee it. And as always, this podcast is sponsored by the Fireman Moving Company. They are the official moving company of WKU Athletics. Not only can they be trusted to move all the coaches in and out of Western, but they can move you anywhere nationwide. The Fireman Moving Company is owned and operated by Firemen and is founded by WK alumni. If you're looking to move sometime soon, give them a call at 270-791-1755 and get yourself a free quote. As always say, it will be the best call, best thing that you do. Um, as far as just any moving needs, they will help you out. They're pros at it. They're fast. They're efficient. And they're fairly priced. We've got Tyler here with me, man. Tyler, it's been a minute since we've jumped into some uh, podcasting, but we're back. You ready to jump into a big episode? Yeah, man. It's going to be a good Red Town wrap-up episode. Uh, you're right. It's been forever, I feel like, since we've been able to do this, but yeah, man, let's let's jump both feet in at the same time. Let's go. Yeah, speaking of that red towel wrap up, um, you know, as always, it is presented by our sponsor, that is Trent Betting Company. Before we get into it, let's get a word from Trent Betting. Don't forget your headboard, pillows, and your sheets. We got everything you need for a good night's sleep. Number one on the same check, best of bowling green. All right, all right, all right. Hey, twins, fool, queen and king, mattresses for anything. Come and pick it out and we can bring it to your house. Have you sleeping real good before the weekend's out? Trip bed, trip bed, trip bed, trip bed. It's just like, it's just like a mattress store. Hey, hey. You can't forget the headboard pillows or the sheets, but let's jump in WKU football. They received a commitment from Terrence Ellis, a transfer linebacker from Alcorn State. Also, they got a, a uh, commitment from Jay Eugene Jr., a transfer cornerback from Tulane, and George Hart III, a transfer running back from Arizona State. Welcome to the Hill, y'all. Yeah, we're in, you know, spring, uh, you know, the portal's closed just a, a few weeks ago, but, you know, guys that are already in the portal obviously can still be signed. There's still guys out there looking for homes. Um, and just on paper, it looks like we found a, a few good ones here. You know, not sure if they'll be starters or just role players, whatever they may be, but they have good experience uh, joining the Hill. So always good to, you know, continue filling that roster with some talent that you've seen play at other places. So, yeah, absolutely. Welcome to the Hill, guys. Now, moving on, Conference USA overall, they announced Missouri State as our 12th member, joining in 2025 with Delaware and also Kennesaw State that joins on July 1st. Uh, WKU Basketball announced a non-conference matchup with the UK at Rupp Arena as part of an MTE. Uh, WKU Basketball also announced two games, uh, their potential dates as part as the Conference USA WAC Scheduling Alliance at Grand Canyon on 11-9 and versus Seattle uh, on 12-16. Yeah, a lot to chew on there. You know, first of all, you know, we know that we had been in search for a 12th member for quite a while um, after adding Kennesaw, you know, announcing them last year, joining in July, then announcing Delaware a few months ago. We were at 11, uh, so it was pretty obvious that we were eventually going to add a 12th. There was a lot of names and speculation about what team, program, school that would be, uh, but they just announced that a couple weeks ago that it would be Missouri State as our 12th member joining officially on July 1st, uh, 2025. So almost a year from now, 13 months from now, um, then Kennesaw State joining next month officially will be in the Conference USA. Uh, WKU basketball, um, you know, having a scheduled matchup with UK, you know, was um, – First time since, you know, 2001, not including, you know, the tornado charity event that we did a few years ago. So first just scheduled game, um, you know, with no ties to it, nothing, you know, no reasoning for it. Part of a 
a multiple multi-team event. Uh, it's going to be at Rupp Arena. I think there's going to be four or five teams. Uh, you know, each of us will play them, each other, and then we'll play UK. So, you know, nice start to our schedule. Um, and then also, you know, at Grand Canyon and versus Seattle here in Diddle Arena. I mean, you know, we, obviously we don't know what the full schedule is going to look like, but just what we know right now, um, you know, it's obviously looking like this year's schedule is going to be a little bit tougher uh, than what we had last year. So I'm here for it. Oh uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, WKU golf. Luke Fuller was named to the Conference USA first team after winning the individual uh, Conference USA title. WKU baseball got a commitment from a Franklin native and JUCO player, Dalton Five Ash. Also got a commitment from the coach's son, Griffin R- uh, Rarden. Welcome to the hill, y'all, as well. Extending that that howdy, y'all. Yeah, Luke Fuller, I mean, he won the individual uh, golf championship just a few weeks ago. So it was a no-brainer that he was going to be on that CSA first team. So congratulations to him. Great season uh, and obviously a great end to the season with that championship. Then WKU Baseball picking up a couple commitments, uh, some local guys, you know, a JUCO kid that had from Franklin that had went away and played, uh, but Dalton Fiveash coming back home playing for Western. And then Griffin Rarden uh, is going to stay home and play for his dad here at Western. Um, you know, really excited about what Coach Rarden is building here on the hill. Um, and I have full faith in him that, you know, both of these guys are going to be, um, you know, just instrumental pieces going forward. And moving on to some pro tops, or uh, at least one pro top, and then some WK football. Uh, Marquis Stepp signed with the New York Jets after initially receiving a mini camp invite. Uh, WKU football season over season opener versus Alabama announced as a 6 p.m. kickoff. Uh, sadly, Alabama opens as a 32 point favorite and the entire schedule of kickoff times was also released and homecoming was announced as it's going to be played on November 16th versus La Tech. I'm just going to start off by saying we want Bama. I can't wait for August 31st. I've already bought my tickets. Um, I'm ready to go. Um, it's going to be fun. I've been there before. I think the last time we played there was 2016. Um, yeah, pretty sure that was the last time we played there. Um, I'm excited to go back. You know, Alabama obviously is Alabama. They have a storied uh, tradition of football. Um, they're going to have a really good football team, but they've got a full you know, new roster, new coaching staff, a lot of stuff they're going to be trying to figure out. And, uh, you know, game one, why not us? 32-point underdog coming in. Um, give me the tops. Tops all day. Tops on top. Um, let's go shock somebody. I'm ready for it. Uh, 6 p.m. kickoff is beautiful. Uh, you know, be able to get there early in the day, enjoy some tailgating, see some sights, walk around campus, and just check everything out. There's a lot to take in. If you are going, if you're listening and going, um, I advise you to get there and just walk around. Um you know, last time I went there, granted it was years ago, but they have a very friendly and inviting tailgating atmosphere, no matter what color you're wearing. So go check them out. Uh, Marquis Stepp signed with the New York Jets. Uh, he initially had a mini camp invite, you know, coming out of the undrafted free agent pool. Had a mini camp invite and now has signed with them. I'm not sure the the details or the length or tenure of that signing, but always good to see a, a pro top. Um, get an opportunity to latch on somewhere. And there's now kind of a uh, Jets WKU connection there. It seems like we've got a lot of guys that have been there or going there. Uh, we all know our boy Malachi is there right now. And then the entire uh, kickoff time schedule was released just this last week. You know, we've got a lot of evening games. We're not going to run down that. We'll do that when we get to the schedule preview. Um, a lot of evening and night games early in the season. Now, I think the last couple games are – earlier kickoffs i think that's kind of become the norm with our schedule for the most part then most notably homecoming being penciled in as 11 16 versus law tech um was kind of a no-brainer with the way the midweek workout in in october so just is what it is a little bit later homecoming probably gonna be a little bit colder than what we would are traditionally used to before the last couple of years but it is what it is law tech's a good opponent should be a good game and a good atmosphere regardless of of when it is or who it's against. So all good news. Now for the people who have uh, been keeping up with it, and if you're still wanting to see pictures and updates uh, of what I'm about to talk about, please go to our social media account, 
for, like I said, updates and everything. But that is the WKU uh, new field turf vortex core playing surface is nearly completed. And I mean, I think it looks amazing. I like the the different colored greens, like every five yards. Uh, I, I I think it looks sharp. I do kind of wish they did the football, you know, maybe big red throwing, you know, the, the quarterback position, big red, but hey, uh, they don't ask me. So they're going to do what they're going to do. Also, WKU soccer got a commitment from Mia Merritt. Welcome to the Hill, Mia. Yeah, it seems like we've got a lot of uh, commitments coming on right now. Football, baseball, and now soccer. You know, pretty awesome news. Always, We're always going to talk about every commitment and new hilltopper that we have joining the family. So absolutely welcome to the Hill. And like you said, that new playing surface uh, is nearly completed. Uh, as we record, it's Monday night. Um, I put a picture up on Instagram earlier today. So Monday uh, this morning, I put a picture up of the most up-to-date picture of what that looks like. And like you said, man, it looks good. The field pops. Um, you know, that old plank surface had just gotten kind of faded. Was was not looking great. Uh, but, man, it really looks good. Those alternating light and dark greens look great. Uh, the big red, new big red towel in the middle. Big red on the 25s. Um, man, it looks sharp. It's a, it's a really solid-looking playing surface. Um, and they have to have that completed. You know, I don't know what the end date is, but there's football camps on campus starting on June 9th. So they've got six days to finish it up, but I think it's about done. Just from what I can see, you know, they might be buttoning down some loose ends. But, man, it looks good. You know, excited to take in a home football game here in just a couple months. So excited. Great news. And moving on to another uh, pro top, the Omaha Supernovas featuring uh, pro tops player Paige Briggs. She, they won the first pro volleyball league championship. Congratulations, Paige. Yeah, that, that, that's all she does is win. I mean, she was preseason conference player of the year last year. She was postseason conference player of the year. She was obviously Conference USA first team all player. Um, you know, tournament MVP uh, led us to a conference championship, NCAA tournament appearance, top 25 appearance, uh, several years in a row. You know, all she has done is win, win, win. Um, new volleyball league got started after she graduated last year. She joined it, was one of the first, you know, first picks in the, in the draft, was an early draft pick, uh, got traded to the Omaha Supernovas, and it worked out for her. They won a championship in their very first year um, against Grand Rapids, I believe it was. Just really awesome news. Um, she has represented this school so well uh, during all her years when she was with us and now even after in her professional career. So definitely congratulations, Paige, and go Tops. Now, we got a little bit of a sad note to land on here. Uh, Hilltopper basketball legend Tom Marshall, sadly, he passed away. He was a consensus All-American in 1953 and 1954. Um, you know, staying with WKU basketball, uh, Jalen Dorsey won the Conference USA Winter Spirit of Service Award. Yeah, definitely, you know, flip the script a little bit there. Had some sad news for our Hilltopper family. You know, it seems like, uh, you know, here the last five years or so, we've lost several of our legends, uh, and Todd Marshall being the most recent one. He was a consensus All-American, like you said, in 1953 and 1954. This was back when Western was an absolute college basketball powerhouse. We were a top five team. You know, ESPN and media big money hadn't come in and divided, you know, uh, college sports into the haves and haves nots. You know, we were just right there competing and proving it on the court, and he was definitely instrumental in that. Was an all-time great player. Uh, so sad to hear that. Uh, obviously, prayers with his family. And then Jalen Dorsey winning the Winter Spirit of Service Award. I mean, that's one of those awards that you know each um, program, each school has somebody that they submit and is nominated for that award. And Jalen was selected as the winner. So just. Props to him. I mean, just being out in the community, doing service, spending time with kids and at the schools, just being an awesome uh, human being and individual, you know, not just a basketball player. Um, you know, he may never go pro in basketball, but he's obviously a good person and has a good head on his shoulder. So congratulations to Jalen. Uh, WKU softball, uh, CUSA attorney. 
They defeated La Tech 10-6, defeated New Mexico State 7-2, lost to Liberty in championship 3-4. Great season overall. You cannot um, hate on that for anything, just wish we would have won that championship. Uh, Katie Gardner surpassed 500 career strikeouts during the Conference USA tournament, and Taylor Sanders broke her own single-season RBI record with number 58 during the tournament. Yeah, we talked about the you know the softball team. They were kind of up and down roller coaster this year. Had a good year, you know, really really good year. But they went through some slumps to lose some games. Um, they get to the Conference USA uh, tournament championship, and they just they kind of got hot. You know, bats got hot. They were hitting a lot of home runs though. Their those first couple games uh, beat Louisiana Tech ten to six, like you said, beat New Mexico State. Um, this tournament was double elimination, and kind of the only I guess controversial thing you could say is that. You know, Liberty was coming out of that loser's bracket. They had already lost a game and advanced to the championship game from the loser's bracket. You know, a lot of people after the fact, when they beat us by one run, uh, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot, had an opportunity to win that game, but we lost. Um, But it just kind of felt like, you know, they beat us once. That's the only game we lost. You know, it feels like we should have had another opportunity to play. If it's double elimination, it should be double elimination. You know, I feel like we should have had another game to determine who wins the, the overall championship. Neither here nor there. That's how it's been for several years. Um, that's also how the baseball tournament was. Um, like it or love it, you know, don't like it, don't love it, whatever. You know, that's the way it is. But, you know, softball obviously finished um, on a high note. Katie Gardner, um, just a great pitcher, 500 strikeouts in her career. And then Taylor Sanders, um, again, 58 RBIs, breaking her own record, just – Solid, solid season, solid team. Um, you know, heck of a way to go out, you know, losing in championship game. But great season and looking forward to next year already. All right. Uh, moving on. And you're right. Moving on, WKU baseball. They sw- they uh, got swept by La Tech and lost two of the three to New Mexico State to finish season. Lucas Luttrell or Litrault, Litrault, shit. You got me on this one. Literal. Literal. Named Conference USA Pitcher of the Week, the final week of the regular season. Coach <laughs> Coach Rarden got win number 1,000 as a head coach. Team set program record with 482 strikeouts on the season versus FIU. Mason Barnes set a program record with his 15th save of the season. WKU baseball with 33 plus wins in consecutive seasons for the first time since 2010-2011. Yeah, a lot of good stuff going over uh, on over at the baseball program, man. I mean, Coach Rarden, um, all he does is win. He came from JUCO, was a longtime winner there. Um, you know, the baseball season, you know, kind of same as softball. We were hot most of the season. You know, seemed like after that UNC Asheville series at the end of the season we kind of went on a little slump there Uh, got swept by La Tech uh, with first place in the conference on the line and then we lost two out of three to New Mexico State Uh, but still good to see Lucas Literal named the Conference USA Pitcher of the Week the final week of the season Coach Rarden getting that 1,000 victory as a head coach I don't know how many coaches have a thousand victories uh, in Division One um, but it has to be pretty rarefied air because, I mean, if you're winning 30 games a year like he is, 30 to 40 games a year, um, that's going to take a long time. So congratulations to him. Uh, the team set their program record with 482 strikeouts on the season. Uh, I don't, I'm don't, i not sure where that number ended up, but, you know, 482 broke the record. So just, you know, an impressive pitching season. Um, you know, I'd like to think Coach Rarden and his staff, you know, have brought a different mindset over. Um, have upped the talent level, and you know, we just saw good pitching this year. And then Mason Burns, you know, kind of on that same note, set the program record with his 15th save of the season. You know, he was leading the nation in saves for most of the season. I think he ended up second or third at the end of the year, um, as it's still ongoing. But, you know, just a really good season for several guys there. Uh, and then the baseball team itself winning 33 games in consecutive years for the first time since 10 and 11, um, just really impressive. You know, at this point, you know, once Coach Rarden has proved he can, you know, flip a program and start winning this quickly, you know, now you start worrying about, can we hold on to Coach Rarden? You know, I hate to go into that mindset, but when other programs start seeing, man, this guy's winning, and winning with a, a new roster, flipped it with a lot of JUCO players and transfers, you know, 
maybe he can help us out. And, you know, I don't want to think like that, but that's kind of the reality of what, you know, today's uh, college game is like. You know, I don't want to be a stepping stone, but I want to keep coach for a long time uh, as he's obviously proven he can win and build a winning team and attract good players. So I obviously hope we do keep uh, keep a hold of him, but I really enjoyed this season. I'm looking forward to next season, you know, same as softball. I think we're building something special with both of those programs. So love to see it. Now we're going to stay right here with WK baseball for, uh, for this next segment uh, going into the WK uh, or the men's baseball tournament. They entered the tournament as a number three seed lost opener to FIU five to three beat New Mexico state eight to two. Uh, beat FIU eight to five, lost to Dallas Baptist U DBU five to seven. Uh, overall great season. Ethan Lazama named to Conference USA All Tournament Team. Yeah, I think this is the second year in a row that Dallas Baptist has knocked us out of the tournament. Um, they are a really good team, really good program, uh, consistently a top twenty-five program. Um, just. You know, disappointing way to end the season, obviously. You know, you want to win your conference tournament. Um, but we entered as a three C. We lost our opener. You know, we could have just hung our head and, and went home after game two, but we beat New Mexico State. We turned around and had a rematch with FIU. We beat them down. And then we took Dallas Baptist down to the wire. I mean, we had runners on with a chance to, you know, pull out a victory late in that game and just couldn't get it done. I mean, they're a good team, good program you know, that's already established. And I feel like we're kind of up on the upswing right now with the, the team, the program, the staff that we're building. So I'm looking forward to, you know, how how this thing looks going forward. I think we're going to continue to be competitive. And then congratulations to Ethan Lozama, named to the Conference USA All-Tournament team. There we go. Uh, going on to what's going to happen in the volleyball and WKU soccer. Uh, speaking of them, the volleyball and soccer schedule was announced. Get your tickets now because I feel like what's about to happen, especially in volleyball, you know, Travis Hudson being there every season in and out. It's always a great team, always a great uh, time going to them games. So everyone needs to get your tickets now and get ready for some, uh, get ready for some good action sports in the fall. Yeah, I didn't list out every game for, for both of these teams. It, you know, it would just be a lot to run down every single game, but, you know, I will say, just like I'll echo what you said, the volleyball team is consistently our best program on campus. They are consistently top 25 in the nation. They get to the NCAA tournament every single year. They win games. Uh, they're fun to watch. You know, I may be biased because I have a daughter that plays volleyball. I have been a WKU volleyball season ticket holder for several years now. We go to a lot of the games. You know, I also go to a lot of basketball games, you know, nearly all of them. I go to a lot of football games, nearly all of them. I promise you that volleyball is the most exciting spectator sport that there is. It's nonstop action the whole time on the court. And plus, we win a lot. You know, I promise you, if you go, you're going to have fun. It's a good environment. The crowds are uh, getting really good. We played, you know, had Louisville at home last year. Um, really solid crowd. The band was there. We may have lost a match, but it was still just a really fun environment that you want to be a part of. Um, I know our schedule this year, we have um, you know, we have Dayton on the schedule, Tennessee on the schedule. Um, just a really, really tough and competitive schedule that's going to, you know, we lost Paige, Paige Brick. We've already talked about her being uh, in the Pro Volleyball League. You know, we've got some young players that are going to have to step up and, and fill her shoes, and um, but it's still going to be a good team. You know, guarantee that. You know, we're going to be a preseason favorite. You know, I don't know if we'll be number one, but we're going to be up there in the top two. I guarantee it. Um, we're always competitive, um, and it's going to be fun. And then same with soccer. You know, fun team to watch. It's not one of those, you know, spectator sports that everybody flocks to. But if you ever go to a game, it's fun. It's a good environment. Um, as long as the weather is nice, it's not a bad seat to find uh, at our soccer facility. So definitely check them both out. Um, get your tickets. Uh, moving on to WKU basketball with some commitment announcement. Uh, they announced the commitments and signing of Blase Keita, a 6'11 transfer from Nebraska, and 6'11 uh, Old Dominion University transfer Leroy Odehai, 
Uh, welcome to the Hill, y'all. I know I probably butchered both y'all's names. I apologize. I'm just a man from Barron County, Kentucky. Have pity on me. I'll try to get better at it. But welcome to the Hill, y'all. Yeah, I promise. If we butcher your name, I promise that'll be the only mistake we ever make on this show. I promise. Um, but yeah, everybody had been freaking out since the season ended. Obviously, we know that you know Rodney Howard exhausted his eligibility. Uh, he really stepped up and was a huge piece of our team last year. And everybody was like, man, who's going to be our big next year? B.J. Marable also hit the transfer portal. He didn't play a lot. Um, but, you know, everybody was just concerned about, you know, who's going to be the guy? You know, who are we going to bring in? And we don't just bring in one. We bring in two guys. You know, Nebraska transfer, Blase Keita, um, and then ODU transfer, Leroy Odehai. He had played uh, – Leroy had played – with Coach Plona before at Indian Hills, so there's some familiarity there. Um, but just nice to have a couple more big bodies, um, you know, to go along with Babacar, Falou. Um, you know, it seems like we've got nice depth this year. As long as we stay healthy, man, you know, this basketball season could be really, really, really special. And moving on to something that I know a lot of people are probably excited for. You've been waiting for it since 2014 whenever they quit making these games. NCAA college football game returned 719. Um, we learned that WKU submitted Big Red, the scoreboard, the football field, the stadium photography from the north, south, east, and west angles, uniforms, and helmets. Um, I'm hoping we might see some some new helmets on there. Uh, maybe some new new uniform combinations, because I'm excited to take WKU. Uh, to to the highest of highs on that game, like I did in 2014. Whenever I just dominated the college football landscape, I ain't gonna lie. No matter who I played, I was winning. Yeah, I'm really excited for college football coming out. I'm not I'm not a big video game player anymore. Uh, when I do play, it's usually a shooter game, usually Call of Duty. If I am playing, you know, since COVID hit, that's kind of been my thing. Uh, but used to be really big into college football and Madden. Um, etc. Back when I was in college, uh, way, even way before 14. Um, but yeah, when they cut off college football in 14, obviously we've all waited a long time for it to come back. Um, definitely going to come out of retirement, going to get college football, going to be, you know, probably simulating and or playing, you know, every uh, upcoming game that we have. I will be, I'm going to smack Bama down probably 20 times before August 31st. I swear they're getting it. The, give me the, give me the playbook. I'm, I, I, I got the recipe. Um, but man, I'm really excited. You know, we, we did ask, um, some of the higher ups at Western to give us some information about what was requested and what we submitted. Um, and that was the rundown they gave us. They didn't give us anything more specific as far as uniforms or helmets. Um, but I did hear that we submitted over a thousand pictures. So, you know, we're expecting this game and the graphics to be very detailed, um, very precise to what we see in real time when we're at the stadium. So I'm expecting to be blown away by the attention to detail, you know, probably the new press box, uh, the new business center will probably be off with the, near the clock tower, you know, the tents behind the end zone, the berm uh, by the video board. Um, I'm expecting everything to just be, you know, 10 times better or, mo or more than what it was in 2014. I'm really looking forward to it coming out of retirement, going to smack down Bama, Tyler, you know, me and you, we're going to link up. We're going to play some games. You know, who knows? We'll see what happens. But I'm looking forward to it, man. Hey, we could definitely try to stream, like, a simulation of the game. And, uh, hey, we might be the next coaches for WKU. I'm, j I'm just throwing that out there. If, if we open a playbook, we pick the right ones, we go. Uh, moving on to the Athlon Sports All-Conference USA teams. Uh, big time con congratulations to the following Hilltoppers first team, Michael Matheson, Dalvin Smith, somebody named Quantavius Leslie. You know, I mean, he's, he's a great player. Some people may not may not put no respect on his name because they're like, you know, but hey, that's them, not us. We 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 are big fans of Quantavius Leslie, Hosea Wheeler, Upton Stout, Anthony Johnson, Jr. And Easton Messer as kicker turner. Yeah, um, you know, Athlon Sports is probably the second, you know, uh, college sports preview magazine that I use. Phil Steele's my go-to, my GOAT. Um, but I do, 
to listen to what Athlon says, and they have already released their all-conference teams. Um, and we had 18 total guys on the team, which is uh, the most we've ever had under Tyson Helton. We had 15 last year. We have 18 this year. Um, and all these guys are recognizable names. You know, Mike Matheson coming back from injury, expecting him to be impactful. Dalvin Smith, you know, obviously a freak athlete, ready to unleash him again this year. Quintavious, you know, anchor on the offensive line. Hosea uh, on the defensive side. And then Upton Stout, you know, te- you know, tested the portal, came back, you know, snubbed Michigan. You know, same with Anthony, Anthony Johnson Jr., you know, tested the portal, came back. And then Easton Messer as a kick returner, uh, we know what we can do, what he can do as a wide receiver. We're about to talk about him again, but man, there's just a lot of talent, and just putting it on paper like this, and just looking at, you know, all these guys just on the first team. Man, I'm I'm excited for this season. Keep it going. Who's next? All right, second team. You got T.J. Finley, Easton Messer again, and Lucas Canario. Yeah, um, you know, probably gonna ruffle some feathers with people, but. The quarterback slotted on the second team is T.J. Finley, not Caden Velkamp. Um, you know, granted, there's been no official announcement by Coach Helton, uh, but for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, I am going under the assumption that T.J. Finley, a former P5 starter at LSU and Auburn, who had a monster season last year at Texas State, who is just freakishly athletic, you know, six seven, two thirty plus. Um, I, I'm just going to go ahead and just pencil him in as, as the day one starter. You know, we haven't seen that official anywhere, but um, I love Caden, you know, friend of the podcast. He's been on here. I think he's a great player. I just don't think he's going to outgun TJ Finley. Um, so glad to see him on the second team. I'm going to assume that Caden Salter from Liberty is on the first team. I didn't look at the full rundown of the teams, but I'm assuming it was Caden and then TJ and even that kind of says a lot about how good TJ is that hasn't played a game at Western, still on the second team. Then Easton Messer um, had a breakout year last year when we had so many wide receiver injuries. Uh, definitely looking forward to seeing more of him this year. And then same with Lucas Canario, um, kind of Mr. Automatic, proved he has a big leg. Uh, definitely looking for, forward to his second season kicking that ball. All right, I'm moving on to the third team. You got Elijah Young, River Helms, Marshall Jackson, Dante McCray, and Kylan Goodry. Yeah, kind of crazy that Elijah Young is on the third team. Really good running back, you know, transferred from Missouri, played for us last year. Um, just a highlight reel breakaway play waiting to happen. Um, I guess mainly because we don't utilize that running back slot as much as some teams. Um, you know, he's not getting a higher team nod but he's just a weapon both handing the ball off to him and passing it to him out of the backfield. Then our boy River Helms, you know, he was kind of my uh, projected breakout player last year, had a really good year. Uh, definitely excited to see him back uh, this next year and what he can do. Uh, then Marshall Jackson on the offensive line and Deontay McCray and Kylan Goodry on the defensive side of the ball. Again, just talent everywhere on this roster, man. I'm really excited for this season. And moving on to four team, we got uh, three people on here: Keyshawn Johnson, Wesley Horton, and Demarco Williams. Yeah, I think um, this one is uh, kind of surprising for me. Maybe I don't know. Maybe 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 not. Um, Keyshawn Johnson. Um, yeah, maybe it's just he's under the radar because he came from Alabama State. He came from a small school, um, but I am expecting a lot of really big and good things out of Keyshawn Johnson. Um, he's a big physical receiver in that Malachi Corley type mold. If you just look at his body shape, uh, he's about that same height and weight. You know, I don't know if we're going to utilize him that exact same way, but you know, I've already seen him on social media saying 14. Okay. Let me write that down. Okay. Put that billboard material up there. Let's see what it says in November, December. So I, you know, I love that energy. Um, and just that chip on the shoulder that he's going to come in and say, okay, we'll find out. 14, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, then Wesley Horton on the offensive line and defensive back DeMarco Williams. Again, just talent up and down this roster. 18 guys on all conference teams. We tied for the most in the conference with Liberty. Um, and we know that they are obviously a very talented and good team. Uh, they will be the favorite in conference. Make no 
you know, jokes about it. They will be preseason favorite. They are a solid team. Um, but it's nice to know we've got a lot of talent. We just have to put it together and go, go beat them when we play on the field. So looking forward to it. All right, I'm moving into the Conference USA Track and Field Championship. Uh, you got Devin Rogers uh, finished second in javelin throw, Kaysen Barden third in shot put, Luke Stegman sixth in shot put, Natanya Linares and Rachel Payne had three top five finishes in the four events of the heptathlon, and Natanya placed third in the heptathlon. Rachel was fourth. Yeah, the uh, Conference USA Championship were a couple weeks ago uh, down in El Paso, I believe it was. Um, and we just we had a lot of guys that ran and placed and threw and jumped very well. Uh, Devin Rogers, obviously second in the javelin throws, impressive. Uh, friend of the podcast, Kaysom Barton, third in the shot put. Luke Stegman at sixth, uh, and then Natanya Linares and Rachel Payne uh, in the heptathlon uh, finished very well in third and fourth. So, congratulations to all of them. And then now we'll look at the runners. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Cameron Horton qualified for the finals in the 100 meter and the 110 meter uh, hurdles. Also placed fourth in the 200 meters to qualify for finals. Uh, Horton placed fourth in the 110 meter hurdles finals. Zachary Martinez fifth in the 400 meter hurdles. Brunel Dizinor third in the 400 meter and the four by 100 meter relay. Julian Cleaner, Gabriel Dozer, Brunel Dizinor and Zachary Martinez finished third. You know what's most impressive about that to me is that Cameron Horton is a freshman um, and qualified for the finals and then ran very well, you know, finished fourth in the 110-meter hurdle final. So just a freshman, you know, I didn't look at the full overall results. You know, I just looked at WKU's results, but I'd be willing to bet um, that he was the highest-placing freshman or just underclassmen, period. You know, usually those events are going to be dominated by your upperclassmen, your juniors, your seniors. Uh, so congratulations to him. Uh, then also all the other ones, you know, Zachary Martinez, uh, Bruce Net, Brunel Desinor, and then the 4 by 100 team placing in third. Just a lot of good results from our track guys all around. Uh, Ayla Basic finished third in the hammer throw. Kaysen, uh, Kaysen Bar Barton finished sixth. Nick Farnoff fourth in the men's high jump. Grace Turner eighth in the pole vault. Grace Turner also finished sixth in the high jump. Ayla Basic, Katie Eisenbarger, and Cameron Horton qualified for the NCAA East prelims in Lexington. Yeah, our throwers um, and our jumpers had a really good meet as well. Ultra Basic. We've talked about her all year. She's been, you know, just a, a consistent, you know, top three, top four, top five finisher in the hammer throw. Uh, friend of the podcast, Kaysen Barden finished sixth. Nick Fornall fourth in the high jump. Grace Turner, uh, pole vault and high jump. Um, and then the three that qualified for the NCAA East preliminaries in Lexington. Uh, congratulations to them. We're about to talk about them next. But all basic, Katie Eisenbarger and Cameron Horton. I uh, got to perform at Lexington, um, you know, this last week. So let's talk about them. All right. So Horton ran a 10.88 in the 100 meter. Uh, basic finished in 31st in the hammer throw with a throw of 57.45 meters. And Eisenbarger cleared 1.84 meters in the high jump qualified for the indoor championships in Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, pretty nice that so we had three um, athletes that went to the, you know, the regional there in Lexington um, and got to compete there, you know, with some, you know, the best of the best, you know, in this area. Uh, Cameron, you know, ran a pretty strong race, didn't run as fast as he did. I think he ran a 10.25 when I looked it up um, at the Conference USA Championship. So a little slower, you know, in Lexington than he ran uh, in the Conference USA finals, uh, but still just, uh, again, a true freshman. You know, running those kind of times is impressive. The Alja Basic finishing in 31st. And then Katie Eisenbarger, the GOAT herself, uh, cleared 1.84 meters in the high jump. And like you said, she qualified for the outdoor championship uh, that's coming up. Uh, I think it's later this week weekend um, in Eugene, Oregon, which is just a historic uh, track and field venue and just place to go get to compete. 
Uh, so for her to qualify for that is just amazing. Uh, congratulations to her. You know, obviously as we move forward, um, you know, it, that hasn't occurred yet. We will update, you know, both, both on social media and on here how she did, but we're looking forward to, you know, hopefully her, you know, get on the podium, get a top three finish in the, in the nation. This is the, not a regional, this is the national outdoor championship for the NCAA for everybody. So really excited for her and for everybody that competed, um, you know, Cameron and Alja as well, but really cheering on Katie um, to go represent WKU and, and go tops. And with that, that concludes the Red Tail Wrap Up brought to you by the one and only Trent Betting Company. Yeah, it had, it had been a few weeks. You know, you know, we, we took a little time off. Schedules conflict. Uh, stuff comes up. Work gets busy. Um, you know, I know you and your wife had softball going on. So, you know, sometimes life gets busy and we, we missed a few weeks. Um, but we're still we're right back in the saddle, you know, updating with all the WKU sports. Um, you know, basically now all the spring sports have come to a close short of Katie Eisenbarger competing at the outdoor championship uh, later this week. So, um, you know, as we move forward into the summer now, you know, like we stated last episode, we're going to move into having some interviews um, that will get done with some former athletes and, you know, maybe some administration staff at Western currently, you know, talk to them about things. And then we'll have the Feel Still magazine coming out uh, later this month, and we'll start into our summer position preview series uh, into July before um, the season kicks off on August 31st. So really looking forward to that. I know, you know, both of us, as we you know did that last year, man, it just makes you a better fan, um, more knowledgeable about the players and the depth that we have and people coming back and just what to expect and you know, just looking at the, you know, just even looking at that Athlon, you know, preseason, you know, first through fourth team, man, there's just so much talent on this football roster. Um, really excited for what the football season is going to look like, you know, obviously on a new turf, uh, building a new press box, you know, the indoor practice facility will be uh, started to be constructed, you know, after this season, I would assume. So there's just a lot of good stuff going on at Western, not to mention the baseball and the softball team and the track and field uh, athletes that we all just talked about. They're just, you know, just a lot of winning, a lot of good athletes, a lot of good people that are here at Western uh, representing this university that both you and I and that all of us listening love. So, you know, love getting to get back together, you know, no matter how long it's been and just, just talk about it, just catch up on it. You know, if, if some of this had fell through the cracks and you didn't see it or know it, um, glad to share it with you and looking forward to, Obviously doing uh, some more of that as we move forward in the summer and, you know, really looking forward to football season in August. So, man, that's all I've got. Tyler, hit us with your final words and take us on out of here. All right. I'm going to uh, start off with a question to you. I saw today you posed that question about – or WKU put out that new logo, Big Red, and it could. And we don't know what sport it is. What is your prediction? I think it's a high jumper. I think I think with the timing of Katie Eisenbarger going to the NCAA Outdoor Championship, I think mm -hmm. it's a high jumper. Big Red's mm -hmm. looking back over his shoulder. He's clearing a high bar at 1.88 meters, about to win a gold medal at the NCAA Outdoor Championships. These people are crazy saying it could be bowling, rugby, lacrosse. Get Guys, it's a high jumper. I, I don't have any inside news or information about what it is or what it isn't mm -hmm. it's a high jumper guys you heard it here first i put it on twitter first i got receipts timestamps. high jumper what do you think see i thought it was going I, I i'm with the camp that thought maybe rugby i thought maybe western was give some love to the rugby team rugby players i had some class with them whenever i was in college their house was right up the road kind of from us uh, and I thought maybe you know he's sitting there, he's got the he's got the ball right there in his elbow, and he was just trucking some people. I you know I can't be mad if it is high jump because Katie going doing Katie things, uh, putting WKU on her back, and just carrying and representing for us. I can't hate on that. That's that's awesome. If it is, I'm excited to see it uh, because you're right. I mean these these people 
these these spring athletes, you know, other than basketball, baseball, softball, I mean, they really don't have many people. You know, the golf teams don't have many people come out and watch them. Um, and it's great to get to highlight their achievements and success, uh, especially if you got someone like Horton, uh, you know, basic, and and it seems like uh, Katie is always on our red tail wrap ups is finishing, you know, top five high, high on the list. Um, just kind of going underneath the radar. It's great to get to highlight them. Uh, going back to the, a few, well, a few, a, a while ago, whenever we was talking about WKU playing UK, uh, first, just, you know, just regular scheduling. I think it's good. I would like to, maybe get a home a home and away with them you know in, in the future you know stop running from us you can't you can't dodge the diddle forever um also extend that to football come on down here and play at the house you ain't got that many football fans let's be honest about it um most people know when you go to kroger field to watch uk play you know you're not gonna probably not gonna walk away out there with a win uh, except if you're playing some, you know, D2 school like they're known to do or D3. Um, but moving on, uh, if Louisville did it, why can't you, you cowards? Like I said, you can't dodge us forever. Um, it just feels good to be back in the be back in the lab and be back in the seat because uh, we did take some weeks off. Uh, I was watching future WKU softball player Katie Murphy. Uh doing great things out there on the diamond um you know sadly Barron county lost to south warren in the regional championship to score four to two uh, it was a good game but now she moves on to play for western next year or next season and uh, trust me Barron county or uh, wku is getting a good one she's a good player uh, she played shortstop in high school and i can't wait to see what she does on the next stage. Um, but man, I mean, this, this, this feels good, bro. It feels like I'm home again. I was kind of feeling like a, like, like, um, oh, what, what was that loose girl? Um, sang, sang like a virgin. You, you Madonna? Know, Madonna, there it is. Yeah, that's, that's, that's music that was too old for me. <laughs> Feel like a virgin getting in touch for the very first time up in here. Whoa. <laughs> I don't mean that in any other way other than it's just been a long time and it feels good to be back in here. Um, and that's why I'm sticking to it. But with that, I will say, Moff, who has it better than us? Nobody, buddy. You always know it. You, are, you, you already know. Go Tops. Go Tops. Later, guys. See you. On Topper Top.